How to treat and cure dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Abnormal uterine bleeding treatment. It's important to let your doctor know if you have abnormal uterine bleeding. There are many ways to help treat it. Bleeding can usually be managed with medicine to reduce bleeding and or hormone therapy to either stop or regulate menstrual periods. Surgical treatment is reserved for bleeding that can't be controlled with medicine or hormone therapy. Acute, severe uterine bleeding. Severe uterine bleeding is usually treated on an emergency basis with a short course of high-dose estrogen therapy. If that isn't effective in rare cases, a dilation and curatage DNC, may be done to clear the uterus of tissue. When needed, a blood transfusion is used to quickly restore needed blood volume. If you are treated for severe uterine bleeding, you and your doctor can then choose a treatment that is safe for the longer term. Ongoing uterine bleeding. Your age, the cause of your condition, and any future plans for pregnancy will impact the treatment choices available to you. If you are a teen, you can expect your periods to become more regular as your body matures. You may choose to wait and see if your periods become more regular. If you need treatment, your doctor may prescribe progestin or birth control pills to regulate your cycle. If you are not ovulating regularly, it's difficult to predict how long your abnormal bleeding will last until you stop having periods completely, menopause. If you need treatment, your doctor may give you hormone therapy, such as birth control pills or a hormonal aid, to regulate your cycle. If you have no future child-bearing plans and have severe symptoms, you can opt for surgical treatment to remove your uterus, hysterectomy or to destroy the uterine lining, endometrial ablation. If you are ovulating regularly, have abnormal bleeding, and plan to become pregnant in the future, talk to your doctor about your treatment options. Depending on the cause of your bleeding, he or she may recommend treatments such as progestin or birth control pills or a hysteroscopy to remove polyps or fibroids. If you have no future pregnancy plans, you can consider endometrial ablation or hysterectomy if other treatment doesn't help. Causes Dysfunctional Uterine Bleeding There are two types of dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Anovulatory, not ovulating, caused by a low level of the hormone progesterone. Progesterone is necessary for the ovary to regularly release an egg, ovulation, as well as for regulating menstrual bleeding. Low progesterone causes irregular and heavy menstrual bleeding. This type of dysfunctional uterine bleeding is common before age 20 and after age 40, perimenopause. During these times of transition into and out of the fertile years, it's normal for progesterone levels to be variable. Ovulatory. As many as 10% of ovulating women have dysfunctional uterine bleeding despite having normal levels of progesterone and other hormones. In these cases, no hormonal or other cause can be found. Experts do not fully understand this type of dysfunctional uterine bleeding and its causes. Symptoms of dysfunctional uterine bleeding You may have dysfunctional uterine bleeding if you have one or more of the following symptoms. Menstrual bleeding that occurs more often than every 21 days or farther apart than 35 days, a normal menstrual cycle is 24 to 35 days long. Menstrual bleeding that lasts longer than 7 days, normally 4 to 6 days. Blood loss of more than 80 milliliters each menstrual cycle, normally about 30 milliliters. If you are passing large clots or soaking a large pad per hour for 8 hours, your bleeding is considered heavy. Categories of Dysfunctional Uterine Bleeding Dysfunctional uterine bleeding can be separated into four categories, estrogen withdrawal bleeding, estrogen breakthrough bleeding, progesterone withdrawal bleeding, and progesterone breakthrough bleeding.4. Estrogen withdrawal bleeding This type of bleeding can occur after bilateral loophorectomy radiation of mature follicles, chemotherapy for malignancy, or administration of estrogen to a castrated woman followed by discontinuation of therapy. Mid-cycle spotting can occur secondary to the decrease in estrogen that precedes ovulation. Estrogen breakthrough bleeding. 
This type of bleeding is a result of the amount of estrogen that is stimulating the endometrium. Low levels of estrogen result in intermittent spotting that may be prolonged but is usually light in the amount of flow. High levels of estrogen for prolonged periods of time result in lengthy periods of amenorrhea followed by acute, often heavy, bleeding with excessive blood loss. Progesterone withdrawal bleeding. Removal of the corpus luteum, or administration and then discontinuation of progesterone or a non-estrogenic synthetic progestin result in endometrial desquamation. For progesterone withdrawal bleeding to occur, the endometrium must first be proliferated by endogenous or exogenous estrogen. Progesterone withdrawal bleeding still occurs if estrogen therapy is continued after progesterone is withdrawn. Only increased estrogen levels of 10 to 20 fold delay progesterone withdrawal bleeding. Progesterone breakthrough bleeding. This occurs with an abnormally high ratio of progesterone to estrogen. Continuous progesterone therapy without adequate estrogen results in bleeding of variable duration as seen in low dose estrogen breakthrough bleeding. This is the pattern of bleeding that can be seen with long acting progestin only contraceptive methods such as Norplant and Depo Provera and the progesterone only birth control pill. Dysfunctional uterine bleeding treatment. Progesterone has been shown to help prevent overgrowth of the endometrium which prevents dysfunctional uterine bleeding. Use of the levonorgestrelid, which releases a progesterone-like, synthetic hormone into the uterus. This reduces bleeding while preventing pregnancy. Hormone treatment. A short course of high-dose estrogen therapy is often used to stop dangerously heavy bleeding. Rarely used medications that stop estrogen production and menstruation such as gonadotropin releasing hormones or danazole. These medications cause severe side effects but are used in special cases. Surgery, such as dilation and curatage, D and C, for short-term relief of severe bleeding or endometrial ablation for longer-term relief of bleeding. In cases of severe uterine bleeding, blood transfusion may be used to quickly restore needed blood volume before a longer-term treatment is used. In uncontrollable cases of uterine bleeding, the uterus may be removed. Treatment Options Surgery Surgery is generally reserved for treating dysfunctional uterine bleeding that can't be controlled with medication. Diagnosis the diagnosis of abnormal uterine bleeding is a diagnosis made by exclusion of uterine or medical pathology. The first and most important step in the diagnostic process is obtaining a physical examination and a detailed clinical history with an in-depth understanding of the patient's menstrual characteristics. Efforts to quantify menstrual blood loss by patients and physicians have been shown to be inaccurate. Approximately half of women reporting excessive menstrual blood loss in actuality do not have an abnormal amount of bleeding. Treatment Estrogens In cases where bleeding has been prolonged and there is insufficient tissue for progestin action, estrogen therapy is indicated to cause rapid growth of the endometrium. A further action of estrogen is to stimulate clotting at the capillary level. Progestational agents in the adolescent and perimenopausal period, it is not uncommon for women to either fail to ovulate or to be unable to sustain adequate corpus luteum function. The progestin intrauterine contraceptive device. Progesterone or levonorgestrel can be delivered directly to the endometrium with progestin containing intrauterine contraceptive devices. Antifibrinolytic agents. Antifibrinolytic drugs are potent inhibitors of fibrinolysis and have been shown to reduce menstrual blood loss by as much as 50%. This treatment is a last resort for patients with coagulation problems.